All right, everybody, there has been some major changes to Flipgrid since the 2017 and 2018 school year. Um, so this will be going out in one of my remind messages for Tech Time Tuesday soon, but Microsoft has bought out Flipgrid and has greatly improved the privacy. Uh, so I've done a little bit of research in the privacy policy and they are um, COPPA compliant. And if you want to check that out, uh, definitely um, go to the section of Flipgrid that talks about the do's and don'ts. You can find the privacy in terms of use there. So uh, just like uh, it was before, uh, to get started, you just click on the educator login and you sign in with your Google sign in and everything looks the way it did before. Um, any previous grids from last year are going to be locked until you change the settings. And so we're going to go after, uh, go over that right now. So uh, when you create a new grid, there's going to be uh, new options. The first option is to use a school email domain, which is when the students would use their school Google account to log in, which is great uh, because then it's uh, sort of a seamless sign on. There is another option to have students use a QR code where uh, they just sort of scan it with the app and it takes them right to the grid or to the topic that they're going to respond to. Uh, the caveat to this is that the teacher must manually create the list or upload a list of IDs, uh, which actually doesn't take that much time. Uh, and I'll talk about in another video why you would want to use one version of login versus the other, uh, whether you want to use Google or use the QR code student ID list. PLCs and public grids are good if you're working with teachers. Uh, these are not for students uh, to be used, uh, so that wouldn't be used quite as often. So we're going to select a school email um, and we're going to give it a grid name. Uh, let's call it sample grid. You can, uh, what's really nice is you can now customize the uh, flip code. So instead of a random group of characters, you can make it a word that actually makes sense. So I'll just call it, um, I'll just call it that, Tech 23. You can choose a picture. I'll go with the elephant because an elephant never forgets. And so when you put things on Flipgrid, but there's all kinds of different themes uh, that you can pick. So when you click next, you have to confirm the school email domain. So now with FCPS, uh, so all students use my.fcps.org. You hit enter. I always add the regular fcps.org because then teachers can participate. Otherwise, um, they will be locked out when it reads the email address from their Google account. So once you do that, you just click launch my grid. Uh, a couple options here. And then you can click customize your grid. And then here are the options. You can always change this code. Uh, which is really great. Uh, you can change the way the students log in. You can add or delete student email addresses here. Uh, if you want to uh, be notified when uh, new videos are added, you want to sort of just get an email saying somebody's posted something, you can turn this on and off here. Uh, same with followers, but here's all the different um, settings that you can have. One setting that you'd want to decide is to allow the students to download their videos after creating a response. Uh, they won't be allowed to download any other students, but they can download their own, but only after they initially post it. They'll, they'll be given an option to do so, uh, but after that, they won't be able to download it, and I'll, I'll highlight that in an, uh, an upcoming video. So here's another picture. You can actually use your own picture if you want. It's great for adding an animated GIF or some other kind of image that might be helpful. And... Once you are happy with all that, you can just click update and here are all of the settings. And just like before, you get a generic um, topic in every new grid called introductions. There is the, um, the individual flip grid code for the grid that when the students use this code, they go directly to the grid for introductions, whereas the customized grid code that we used up here takes them to the grid so that they will see any topics there and can individually select the topic that they want to respond in. Going directly to the topic does not prevent them from getting back to the 
overall grid, but it does make things easier and it helps to get the students to where they need to be versus posting in the wrong topic. So that's not a bad idea to use that whenever uh, you need to make sure that the students are getting where they need to be. So that's it on getting uh, set up with a grid and on another video we'll go and dive deeper into creating a topic.